As always, I want to start off with a special thank you to the people who helped me get started in 3D printing. Uh, they're all great YouTubers. Please check them out. So today I want to just do a quick hit video on some actually very, very advanced support placement techniques which will really help you to have pristine models. Um, and I, I cover some of these in my longer videos, but I thought let me just do a quick hitter. So let's say you have a long, delicate piece. Here we have delicate fingers, right, which are supporting quite a bit of material. So I would need to get a heavy support in there somewhere to support that arm, but I don't want anything heavy touching those fingers. I want them to come out beautiful. And on the sword, uh, it's, there at least it's not supporting much material. So I'd put a heavy somewhere in the back, but for now I just want to, uh, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to show you how to support your supports. So I want to use all of my super lights, and anyone who knows my settings know my lights are lighter than, about as light as you can do. So I want to lace this thing with lights so that they're all connected. That gives them some support, but as we all know, light supports can fail. They can fail on the way up when they're very long like this, even if they're interconnected. So the advanced technique I'm going to show you is if you can support your model, why not support your supports? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some medium supports I'm going to, and I'm going to attach them to my light supports. And by doing this, and I'm almost slapping them down randomly, but you'll see everything is interconnected in a huge web. Now my light supports will not fail on the way up, even a huge distance like this, which, which in the past has caused even me some failures uh, until I figured out I should support my supports. So support your light supports when they're really, really tall. Or for some reason you can't interconnect 10 or 15 of them like this. You only have one or two light supports. Make sure you support those with a medium uh, support. You could use a heavy tube, but medium is, is fine. Okay, the next thing is on these fingers. I know I'm going to put a heavy somewhere on the palm because I need to support that arm, but let's not talk about that really. What I want to focus on is these fingers. So I'm going to use my ultra light supports because I want those figures to come out undamaged. So there are five, I'm going to drop five supports all the way down here. I'm going to edit them to attach the top to the fingers. Uh, we don't have to worry about the ball joints for now. I'm not going to really get into that in this video. That, that's not the point. The point is showing you that when you have this distance for supports as thin as I make them, these can also fail quite easily because as they're going up, there's suction from other parts of the model. And we're talking about microns thick um, supports. So they can easily fail. So what I want to do, here's something happened naturally. See how that crisscrossed? I'm going to lump all these supports so that as much of them crisscross and intersect as possible because that, that prints as a solid lump then, and that is a lot stronger, of course. So that makes these light supports, at least they have a less distance to go when they're on their own, independent, where they could fail. So, um, you know, especially on this lower part of the model where the bases might be creating a little more suction despite the angle, I want to make sure those things don't fail. The other thing I do, let's say there's a part of the model that I do need to support on the leg somewhere. Uh, instead of just, you know, doing my normal support to it, which I would do from off the base of the model. As you guys know, I don't like to mess up my model, so I do everything as far away from the model as possible. So once I attach it, though, I'm going to say, listen, why don't I use this? Okay, I'm going to use this support to support my light supports again. So I'm going to drag it over. And I'm going to try to intersect my thicker support through as much of my thin supports as I can, again, supporting the material. And if I can raise the angle by moving the ball joint up without affecting anything else, I'm going to raise it as high as I possibly can because I want to support these skinny little supports as high up as I possibly can. So here I killed two birds with one stone. I supported another part of the model I needed to, and I also am helping those ultralight supports make it up to the part of the model that they need to get to. So the last thing I'm going to show you in this quick video is another way of supporting your supports. Now, not on this model. We're going to, we're going to invent the situation here, but this has come up for me on many other models. There's a part I need to support, okay, and I need to get something thin to it. So I drop it down. I drag my ball joint up so I'm not intersecting any models. And let's say something has to be far away because there's something on the base there, maybe toes coming out. You know, it could be numerous things. And let's say I have to angle my ball joint up so I'm not intersecting anything else on the model. Well, suddenly I'm left with a very thin support going almost horizontally, and that could easily fail, very easily fail. So what I want to do there is, and if there's stuff in the way I can't move that support really, I need to figure out a way kind of to support that thin part of the support. So I will drop other supports off other parts of the models where it's not intersecting anything. And then I'll join them. And here I'm just joining it right to it, but I'll show you. I'll move them as if there was something there. So I never want anything on the base, of course. So let's say there was something at the base here and these supports had to be a little further away. So what I would do is I have these supports are, you know, going around whatever's blocking me. 
and then they are supporting the support. And I'm changing those ball joints so they're not horizontal either. I don't want it to support those, obviously. So now I have a long, thin support, but at least it's partially supported as it goes. So a lot less chance for it to fail. And remember, not only do I want my models to come out perfectly and I want your models to come out perfectly, I want you to have less failures. So these three methods of shoring up and supporting your supports will help you have less failures, less fail. You don't want a model print out 95% good and 5% fail. You know, that's just as bad as 100% fail for me. So it's important to remember these techniques when you run these situations, you can use them. So that's it. Quick little video showing super advanced techniques. Uh, watch my other videos. You'll see these in play on real models. Please like, please subscribe, and thanks for watching.